to another episode of Into the Hive Mind. It's here, the Balanced Data Slate, post-LVO 2024. Um, purgatory is over. We no longer have the 10-day wage period uh, post-LVO before, you know, getting to theorycraft any other ideas. Very excited about this Data Slate. Um, it certainly cut the top off of the competitive meta and uh, is raising the floor as well. So some of those bottom armies, Drukhari especially, got a massive revamp. Um, very excited for them that and my uh, you know main practice partner Cody Giroux is now moving off of Eldar to Drukhari. So we're gonna see just how good of a buff those guys receive. Um, this video is not about them though. This video is of course about our Tyranid pals. Um, so if you want to watch you know episodes about uh, the entire data slate, you've got Art of War, you've got Tactical Tour, you, you got other channels. This is a Tyranid channel. We're talking Tyranids. Um, and I will only be referencing the other stuff as it pertains to how Tyranids will be doing in the meta. So um, probably a quicker video today, but want to get it out there for you guys um, as quick as possible. So um, first off, data slate changes. Um, core data slate, nothing really changed in terms of core rules. Um, transport stuff, I think, which doesn't pertain to Tyranids really, because um, the only transport we have was specified uh, get out as soon as you deep strike, so uh, that doesn't pertain to us really at all. Um, and other than that, uh, we got point changes. We did not get touched in terms of the general um, data slate at all, and that's fine, because I think any changes that would have come to us would have been probably negative ones. Uh, the only thing I can think of is if they wanted to take away our spore mine doing actions, which I just don't think they're going to do. They, they raised the points of the bio bore significantly enough that I think they're happy with that. Um, and keeping us to one spore mine a turn, I think that's totally fair. Um, the only other data slate change that I would have liked to see is actually more a codex change. All I really wanted was synapse on a broodlord and a, uh, parasite of Mortrex. I just, I just think they should have it. <laughs> Um, sadly we didn't get that and I kind of expected that as well, but, um, that's the only like rules change that I would want Tyranids to have. Um, but point changes, I think we deserved a lot of point changes and we got a lot of point changes. So I'm going to go through every single unit, regardless of if they changed or not, and kind of talk about their viability. Um, so yeah, let's just go down the entire Tyranid index, uh, unit by unit. We'll go quickly. Um, so first off, we got Barb Gaunts. Barb Gaunts are still 60 points a model. They didn't change. Or 60 points for 5, 120 for 10. Um, these guys are fine. Uh, if you are in a Horde-heavy meta, then you want to spam these guys. We're not in a Horde-heavy meta. so uh, One unit of 5 for their slowdown effect is great. Uh, because they require line of sight, I don't see any reason to spam these guys. Um, you're only going to have one or two targets at most for them to shoot and slow down anyways. Um, so yeah, I, one unit of five is fine if you want to throw them in the list. They can be competitive. Biobore, didn't change. Still 75 points. You're still only taking one because you can't make more than one spore mine and their uh, damage profile is beyond anemic. Um, so yeah, you take one in pretty much every list. You want the spore mine to do secondaries. Uh, Broodlord, our first point change. Broodlord went down 10 points. Uh, sadly, I still think this is not quite enough. Uh, 20 points would have made him totally worth it. Um, cause, but right now, honestly, a Winged Prime versus a Broodlord, the Winged Prime is 15 points cheaper and carries Synapse and is faster. And has sustained hits for itself. Um, uh, I don't, like, I guess the Broodlord could chunk some dev wounds, but because we have not really ways to get good rerolls. He's gonna get one dev wound through and do two damage and you'll be like, yeah. Um, Brood Lords are fine. If you wanna attach one to a 10 man Gene Sealer squad, that could be viable. I still think it's slightly too expensive. Uh, Carnifexes, they didn't change. I think this was a huge miss. Um, Carnifexes at 125, I just, no. <laughs> Um, the only reason you would ever take them is to pair them with old one eye. And even then I still think you only do that in a, uh, index detachment of the invasion fleet. Cause then you're just fishing for the lethal or sustained, uh, depending on what you chose and you just 
take Devourers or Deathsmitters, depending on if you want shots or AP. Um, and I think that's the only way that you take Carnifexes. I don't see spamming them at all. Uh, 125 is just still too expensive for what they give you. Hitting on fours without rerolls is bad. Um, I, I think these guys should be 100. Just, just 100 even. Maybe 105 would make me takeable. Uh, 125 without a one eye, they're still just bad. Uh, Death Leaper, our first points increase. Death Leaper went up 10 points to 80. I think that's fine. Um, for everything that he brings to the table, fight first, uh, two damage, stealth, infiltrate, uh, loan op, leadership shenanigans, 80 points. Yeah, I think that's fine. 10 points is exactly what I think he needed. Uh, and you still take him. He's great. Exocrine, untouched, stayed at 135. I'll be honest, I expected these guys to go up at least 10 points. Um, and I think going up 10 points would have been fair. 15 points would have been a little much, but that's kind of what I expected them to do, was make them 150. Um, but no, they're still 135. They're still great. Bring a lot of them. Uh, there's, they are our best gun platform, period. Um, so yeah, Exocrine at 135. Not having an invuln makes them squishy, but they, they have the range to actually hide far enough back that they're most of the time okay. Um, they just die to Iron Storm, you know, Lancers or whatever, but that's fine. Uh, Gargoyles, they went up 5 points for 10, 10 points for 20. Again, this is fine. Um, it means you're not spamming 60 of them, probably. Um, Nobody was really doing that anyways, so this is just a slight point tax on a very good unit. So, I, I think that's fair. They went up to 80, they're still, um, they're obviously our most expensive troop, like, gaunt equivalent, but they, they should be. They are far and away better than all the rest of the gaunts. So, um, yeah, I think that's fine. Running them to do what they've been doing, they only went up 5 points for a 10 man unit, so take it. Gene Stealers went down 5 for a 5-man unit, down 10 for a 10-man unit. Um, again, this is this is cool. I'm glad that they looked at them and agreed that they needed to be buffed. I still don't think they went far enough. Same as the Broodlord. Um, I think if they'd gone down 10 for 5 and 20 for 10, then, then I think we're talking. Uh, a 10-man unit for 140 and then 70 more points for a Broodlord. You're looking at a 210 point melee unit that is strength four, rerolling ones to wound. I don't think that's that's not crazy, <laughs> um, and we're still 20 points above that. And I just melee warriors with a prime are strength five and are fully twin linked, and I think they're at so melee warriors and a prime are 235 points, and 10 gene stealers with a broodlord have basically an identical damage characteristic profile, except for the fact that that was when they had full rerolls. Um, now they, because the Gene Stealers, 10 Gene Stealers has 40 attacks, six Melee Warriors has 36. The Gene Stealers are strength four AP two, the Melee Warriors are strength five AP two, the Gene Stealers reroll ones to wound, and the Melee Warriors are twin linked. So it's just, I'm sorry, you, you just look at a one-to-one -one comparison, plus the melee warriors get some Fs. And in the invasion fleet, that means they can get a five or feel no pain and uh, not have to have a babysitter to get it. So, um, unfortunately, I think gene are still just slightly too expensive. Um, they need to go down another 20 points for a 10-man unit with a Broodlord. Um, small five-man gene Seer squads are fine. If you just want little harassment infiltrators, 75 points, I, I think they're good. Um, but that's all I really take him for. Uh, Harpy. Unchanged. 215 points for a Toughness 9 monster with a 3-up save and no invuln. And, yeah. A, a, and a D3 shot gun. <laughs> Laughable. Moving on. Um, awful. Horror Specs. 125 points. Didn't change. Um, I actually would have been fine with this guy going down another 10 points. Uh, his, his damage profile is kind of anemic as well. Um, being strength 7, AP 1 in combat is very meh. Um, Horror Specs is, however, they are great in an Assimilation Swarm. Unfortunately, that's one of our worst attachments. Um, and they're okay in Invasion Fleet because they can get the Sustained or Lethal. 
um, which makes them considerably better. But having no invuln um, and needing to get in combat to do anything uh, makes them... They're fine. People run them because they're really just a block of wounds for 125 points, and that's acceptable. So I personally don't run Horus Vexes, but I know a lot of competitive players do, and there's nothing wrong with them. Uh, Hive Crone. Same as the Harpy. 200 points, didn't get moved at all, still sucks, and is ridiculously overcosted for no reason. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Moving on, don't play any of our bugs. I'm sorry, guys. You get to stay on the shelf and look pretty for a whole nother edition. Um, Hive Guard. Don't worry, guys. They actually did not get nerfed. They, so, they, they just stayed the same. There's still 220 points for you might kill a Space Marine. Uh, I, they're, they're paying for their sins of uh, ninth edition. I'm sorry, Hadgard. Apparently, what you did is completely unforgivable, and uh, you will be on the shelf till like twelfth edition at this rate. Um, Hive Tyrant, two hundred and thirty-five. He also did not change. Um, I think this was a miss. Hive Tyrants are a little too expensive for what you get. Um, the walking one at 235 and the flying one at 210. I think the walking one should be 210 and the flying one should be at like 190. I, they're just a little too expensive for what they do. Um, the free strat is nice, but now that it's only battle tactics, they're only good in half the detachments. Um, and their damage profile is just so bad. Uh, being AP2 in combat with only six attacks with... You know, if you just happen to... Basically, if you just roll up and you roll three ones out of your six attacks, they just do nothing. And there's nothing you can do about it. And it, it, it's really sad. Um, I, they're obviously still useful because of the free strat, but I don't think they're 235 points useful. The assault bubble is the only reason why I'm still taking a walking hive tire. But, uh, so I would agree the walking one is better than the flying one. But still, I think both of them are too expensive. Um, still take them, but just be aware that you're paying too much. Uh, Hormigants stayed the same. Um, I don't know what I would have done. I'd probably drop them another five, make them the same price as Termagants, because, I mean, you, you still never really see Hormigants or Termagants, except in Endless Swarm. Um, the occasional 10-man Termagant squad just for bodies on an objective that are OC2. Um... And Hormigons can't fill that role because Termagons do the for cheaper. So, um, yeah, I think if you just made Hormigons the same price as Termagons, they'd be fine. Um, I, I understand why they don't want to make our Gaunt models cheaper. Uh, we're, we're dangerously close where that one point per model difference really would stack a lot. And suddenly our Endless Swarm can have 300 bodies and it would be really good. Um... So yeah, Hormigons stayed the same, and they're probably still staying on the shelf. On the shelf, um, if you want one unit to help movement block, or you know you're taking them in an endless swarm, that's that's what you're taking more Hormigons for. Uh, Lictor, sixty points, stayed the same. So these guys are good. Um, they're great in Vanguard with advance and charge. Um, honestly, I'm thinking Lictors are probably going back in my list now because, uh, I, as I said, we're going to discuss meta picks that affect Tyranids, I actually do think you put Lictors back in your list because Fight First Precision is really good against Necrons, and I think Necrons are obviously going to be the new uh, boogeyman of the edition because uh, Eldar and CSM got knocked off the top, and Eldar or Necrons were the next guy in line, and they didn't get touched. Um, I think they will be touched in three months, but I think Necrons are going to be far and away the best army in the game, and they really don't like their characters getting precisioned out, at least not in the uh, Canoptic Court, which is probably going to be the most popular one. I don't think it's the strongest, but uh, it is the easiest to play, so that is what most uh, average level tournament players will be playing. Um, so having like two Lictors just as cheap guys to do actions, and then when you go into that Necron matchup, just snipe out their characters... Um, I, I, I don't think they're a bad choice at all. Malaceptor, 170, um, unchanged. 
This is actually fantastic. I was running three of them at LVO, and I was expecting them to go up, and they didn't. So, still fantastic. Being uh, Toughness 11 with a 4-up Invuln is the big thing on this guy, as well as the 6-inch Aura for minus 1 to hit. Um, the minus 1 to hit Aura was really important against World Eaters, and at least according to the World Eaters players I've talked to, World Eaters are dead. Um, I think they're being a little over the top, but... Maybe they're not, and maybe we don't have to worry about world leaders anymore, so maybe they're slightly less impactful, at least with the minus one to hit. But still, just having a toughness 11 monster with a four of invuln that you can just shove in your opponent's face and say, deal with it, here's three of them, um, I'm finding is actually really, really good, and most people can't. So, yeah, Malice Scepter's at 170 is great. Uh, Moloch, 145. Unchanged. Um... Molochs are fine. They, I could honestly see them going to 125, and then I'd actually be sticking them in a lot of lists. They are in some competitive lists, um, especially Vanguard, where they can go back into Deep Strike and then do their Mortal Wounds again. I think they should have that in their data slate, and then they'd be good. Um, unfortunately, their Mortal Wounds are still, even when they do pop up, at most you're doing three, which is never going to you know kill a unit or snipe a character that's important. So... They're okay. Um, they're great at just being annoying and telling your opponent to shoot something. So they're great distraction card effects, but I don't know. They're very. I, I think they could have gone down twenty points and then they'd be taken. Uh, Mucolid spore mines, hilarious. Still fifty points a model for a guy that self destructs and uh, is really easy to kill. And honestly, and their damage got just put in the dirt compared to last edition. Uh, at LVO last year, I was running nine Mucolid Spore Mines, and they were hilarious and really good. And this edition, they're just not. So, yeah, they're hilariously overcosted. You will never actually pay points for a Spore Mine uh, or their Mucolid Spore Mines. Uh, you're, yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Neurogaunts, uh, unchanged. 45 points for 11, 90 points for the 22. Uh, they're just great. They're tough. They're basically four points a model, and they can pass around synapse. They're really good in the synaptic nexus detachment, and in the rest of them, if you need cheap bodies, they're there for you. Uh, they don't really do anything though, so I really like them in the synaptic nexus, and that's about it. And that's specifically because they are a forty-five point unit that I can throw in my opponent's face, and if they happen to ever fail battle shock, I can use the grenade strat off of the neurogons. Uh, is a fun little trick with them. Other than that, um, Termagants do the same thing for pretty cheap and are OC2, so I think Termagants are better in basically every other detachment, and Neurogants are better in the Synaptic Nexus. Uh, Neurolictor went up to 80 points. 15-point um, price hike. This hurts a lot. Um, I think Tyranids are basically required to run at least two Neurolictors because, again, I've talked about this before, our strength cap at nine, basically, for our army basically requires us to get plus one to wound in order to hurt big stuff. Um, so then putting a... Then making those... Like, obviously everyone was running a bunch of Neurolictors because we needed it. And then they raised the points. And I would have been fine with a 5-point nerf. A 10-point nerf, okay, but that's a little harsh. No, they went all the way. They did the 15-point nerf. Um, that hurts a lot. And I think you still take 2. I don't know if you take 3 anymore. Um, and you just, you just eat the points with our stuff that went down. Um... Yeah, I do think they went a little high on these guys. Uh, I 75 is kind of what I was expecting them to go to. Going to 80 was a lot. Um, but I think you still take them because you have to. Tyranids just, they need that plus one wound. Um, but yeah, moving on. Uh, Neuro Tyrant stayed the same, 105. He's great. Um, help you Battleshock better. And honestly, for his defensive profile and his flamer, 105 seems perfect to me. Um... I mean, he, you don't put him in every list, but I, I think that means he's appropriately costed. So, um, yeah, great. Norn Assimilator. Uh, the Norn Assimilator dropped from the 310 to 290, so he's now the same price as the Emissary was. Um, 
I yep, this is right where I think he should be. Uh, he was definitely too much before. I might have even gone five points further to 285, I think is right where the Norris simulator would be, but a five-point difference isn't a huge thing on a 300-point model. So, um, yeah, Norris simulator, I, I think Norns are, are pretty much appropriately costed now, and they're worth running. Um, beforehand, I was... They were good to run before, but in my opinion, if you were going to run them, you had to basically run three and just stat check your opponent. Running one was just saying, hey, shoot this, and they're like, okay, and now it's dead. Uh, running three is actually difficult for your opponent to kill. So, yeah, um, now it's a lot easier to run three, and you're not quite as upset if your opponent just kills it uh, if you're just running one. So, in the same vein, uh, the Norn Emissary went down 15 points. It is now 275. This is great. 275 for a 4-up Invuln, Toughness 11, 16 Wound, probably 5-up Feel No Pain model. Um, seems great. So, uh, it the Norn Emissary's damage output is very mediocre for a 275-point model, but its durability is through the roof. So, that's why you're taking it, that and the obviously the OC-15. Um, Norns are great. I, it's just very difficult to fit them in lists because there's so many points, so them going down helps a lot. Old One-Eye, 140 points, stayed the same. Uh, he's good. I on it like, I wish he gave himself rerolls all the time, not just when he was leading a Carnifex. Um, that's my only complaint about him. I still think at 140 he is kind of a steal, and I, I'm okay running him by himself. Running him with two Carnifex friends is good, but 390 points is a lot of points. Uh, but people have had great success with him. I I think it's just a tad too many points for the 390. Running him alone at 140 is fine, and it would be fantastic if he had his rerolls. Then he'd be in all my lists. But um, yeah, moving on. Parasite of Mortrex, 80 points. Big miss, in my opinion. He didn't change. Um, this thing needed to go down at least 10 points. I think it needed to go down. It either needed to go 10 points and get synapse or go down 20 points. Because right now, 80 points for just a lone up guy. And that, that's literally all he is. He's just 80 points for a lone up guy that moves 12. Which, like, the movement is cool. But he doesn't have synapse. He doesn't do damage. The spawning ripper thing is cute, but it's so situational. It's going to happen one in every one game in a tournament maybe um and you know even then it's not like it's going to really matter that much um so yeah i think this guy is just i mean he's there he's sitting on the shelf he's probably not leaving the shelf um if he had synapse it'd be a totally different story but he doesn't psychophage 125 um my psychophage is still sitting on sprue unassembled in in my uh Leviathan box. He didn't go down. He's still 125 points, so he will remain unassembled in that box. Um, these guys need to be like 90 points. I don't... They Their damage does nothing. Their 6-up feel no pain is cute. Uh, it is not worth 125 points. So, if they were 90 points, I would take them. But, yeah, they didn't change, so he's staying in the box. Um, you might take one if you're running an assimilation pulse. Uh, swarm, but I'm not because that's one of the worst attachments. So, yep, in the box he stays. Pyrovores, they actually went up uh, five points a model. That's fine. It was kind of hilarious that they were 30 and a biovore was 75. Obviously, a biovore is overcosted for its stat profile, it's just paying because it makes spore lines. Um, Pyrovores at 35 is fine. Like, they were a steal of a profile for 30 points. Um, it just sucks because, I mean, especially the Assimilation Swarm did not need to be nerfed. And in the Assimilation Swarm, you're running nine of these. So that's a 45-point hike on a otherwise 270-point um, unit. So that's actually pretty substantial. Um, but it's, for the most part, it's fine. It just sucks for the Assimilation Fleet. Uh, Raveners, 75 points, unchanged. Uh, these guys are actually really good. Uh, if... If the spore mine thing ever happens that it's not going to do actions, Raveners are going to be our go-to. The pickup, come down, do actions, same as a Kalidus does, makes Raveners really good. 
Um, plus, they're just really fast and twin linked. Uh, the only reason you don't take them is because they're not synapse, and that's yeah, that's why you don't take them. <laughs> um, but I, I, they are f fantastic at the secondary game, and you know we just have spore mines that do it better and rippers that do it better right now. But if if they ever were to come out with a you know zero OC models can't do actions, raveners would instantly become our go to. Um, so they're fine at 75 points. Um, with a 5-up save, they could maybe go down to 65, but they're fine. Uh, Ripper Swarms at 20 points. Same thing. These guys are great for just doing actions. Um, honestly, if, if you ever just have 20 points lying around, yeah, grab your Ripper Swarm. You're not going to be disappointed with them. It's it's just going to deep strike in and do a teleport homer at one point during the game, and you'll be like, yeah, that's worth 20 points. So um, you're never running more than one model units of these guys, but, uh, Screamer Killer, this is the big one, in my opinion, uh, down 25 points to 145, I think this makes these guys completely playable, um, apparently looking at, like, the Tyranid fan base, they say he still sucks, I disagree completely, Screamer Killers were, I think 145 is exactly where they should be, um, I, I agree that they're, their gun is does not do damage. That's not why you take the gun. Um, their durability kind of sucks not having an invuln, but a two-up save with cover is going to give you a four-up against most things. Um, and, I mean, yeah, toughness nine with ten wounds is certainly not a durable profile, but that's why he's 145 points now. Um, yes, a har specs hits about the same in combat and is cheaper and is more wounds with a higher toughness. But the two up save does kind of make up for that difference. And honestly, the Screamer Killer, I don't think, are you guys playing Tyranids? At least the guys on the forums, the battle shock check at minus one is huge. Uh, you, you, put, you put Death Leaper next to a target that you're planning on killing that turn. You then shoot that target with a Screamer Killer. They take a battle shock check at minus two. They're they're probably gonna fail. And even if they pass, hey look, you have a second screamer killer. And now they're battle shocked, and the rest of your army can pick up that unit that you absolutely have to kill this turn. Um, that's that's how Tyranids play, and the screamer killer allows this to happen. Um, so I just I don't know. I think screamer killers are great, and as a bonus effect, if they ever actually make it into combat. 12 attacks? Is it at 10 or 12? Uh, but at strength 10, AP 2 for 3, that's great. Um, they're probably not making it into combat, but they are they are doing the distraction carnifex thing. So in my opinion, you outflank these guys. Um, you shoot and battle shock something that need, really needs, uh, that the rest of your army needs the plus 1 to wound against. And yeah, then if your opponent doesn't kill them, then they go in and charge. Um, that's how I think these guys are played, and I think at 145, that is the perfect point for them, and I kind of want two of them now in most of my lists. So, making room for them does suck. I don't, like, I have, I have to drop some stuff, but I think they're worth it. Um, this is honestly the, the biggest new kid on the block for me, in my opinion, on this day of sleep change. Uh, Spore Mines, still, again, 55 points for three. Hilarious. Never do it. Uh, Spore Assist, unchanged, 145 points. Yeah, moving on, we're still in Spore Mine territory. 145 points to make one Mucolid a turn is um, bad. It'd be fine if the Mucolid still did like D6 Mortals on a 2 through 5 again, and uh, D3 plus 3 on a 6 like they used to. But with uh, even, basically with a 2 through 5 giving you D3 Mortals, and you're probably at most having two of these go off on an opponent. You're like, woo, I did four damage. That's not worth 150 points, guys. I'm sorry. Um, Termagants, 60 points. Like I said, they're good for just having OC2 bodies on objectives. Garboils are still probably better, but if you want, if you need that 20 extra points uh, for something else, then Termagants are your go to. Uh, Termagant. 190 points uh, didn't change. I think this was, again, a miss. The Turbagon does literally nothing other than give Termagons lethal hits, and the only time you're ever going to do that is in an Endless Swarm, and even then it feels bad 
Um, because, yeah, you could just have 30 more gaunts for the price of a Turbagon, and yeah, it's... I still take one in my Endless Swarm list, but I'm telling you, it feels bad every time, and that is the only list you will ever see one of these ever. Um, I don't know what they need to do with the Turbagon. They need to give it, make new uh, units back, or they need to I don't know, give it combat i guess it's it's just bad especially now that it can't even be bodyguarded so you have to assign a very large portion of your little bit of hidey hole uh the turbagon has to take up like 80 percent of that otherwise it just dies and even then it's it's not even giving you that much of a benefit so yeah um it should have gone down and it also just needs a rules change and it didn't get either of those so you also get to just stay on the set uh, Swarm Lord, unchanged, 270 points. I disagree with this completely. Uh, Swarm Lord is like 45 points too expensive. His damage uh, profile is pathetic for being the Swarm Lord. Uh, strength 9, AP 2, I don't care that you're twin linked. Strength 9, AP 2 is laughable for the Swarm Lord, the combat monster that is, I don't know, he just. Again, what I've been joking with people is he used to ignore invulnerable saves. Now he doesn't even ignore Cabalite armor. Like, <laughs> it's just... It's so sad. And he's 270 points. For 20 points more, you get the Norn Assimilator. Like, <laughs> it's just... Uh, yeah, the extra CP is cool. The, uh, the Vect ability is cool. But not. it's not worth 270 points. Especially because... If you're taking him for that, then you want him to hide all game to be able to use those abilities. And that's just counter to him being the melee beat stick that he's supposed to be. I, he needs another ability to justify hiding behind all game, or he needs to be stronger in combat, and he needs to be cheaper. He just... I'm sorry, guys. The Swarm Lord, he's just a miss this edition, and it really sucks. Um, Alright, moving on. Toxicrine, 150 down 30 points. Um, this is where the Toxicrine, I think, should be. I, probably 140, I think, is actually where the Toxicrine should be. But 150 is great as a new testing bed. Try and get this model out there. Um, it's identical defensive profile to the Har Specs. Um, for 25 more points, you don't really get any better weapons. In fact, they're probably worse. But you get really cool abilities. Um, the Toxicrine, again, you guys probably don't even know their abilities, but they can keep stuff held in combat on a 3-up when it tries to fall back. And at the end of your movement phase, it just dishes out mortal wounds to everyone within 6, which is pretty cool. Um, honestly, just having one Toxicrine like, sitting on a side objective behind a ruin for 150 points seems fine to me. Um, any... You know, any small unit that comes to play, the Toxicrine just grabs it and doesn't let go until they die from mortals. Um, any big thing, he also just grabs and doesn't let go until the rest of your army can deal with it. Um, and the whole time that your opponent is being held onto, they're also taking mortal wounds. So I, I think that's funny. I don't know if they're actually competitive. Probably not. But I, I will be putting one or two on the table just to try them out. Um, I'm excited for them to finally see the table again. Trigon, down 10 points to 170. This is great. Um, Trigons were already good. They they were a little expensive, but they the three inch deep strike is just incredible. And being able to rapid ingress three away as well is, it just makes Trigons really good and a unique tool that you don't have from any other unit. So they are good regardless of their points cost. I do think their points cost was a little too high, so them going down 10 is great. Down 15 is probably where they should be. I think 165 is exactly what you should be paying for a Trigon, but 170 is not too far off. Um, yeah, they're just a really cool tool that is difficult to pull off, but just making, making your opponent have to screen out 3 inches or punishing them if they don't uh, is just a really good thing to have. Uh, so yeah, Trigons are great. Going down 10 points, that's definitely a benefit. Uh, Tyranid Warriors with melee bioweapons. 
unchanged. Um, that's unfortunate. <laughs> so 85 for three, 170 for six. They, I love these guys. I played two units of them at LVO in the invasion fleet. And again, I think you guys are sleeping on this uh, unit because they kill things that Tyranids otherwise can't kill. Being able to take the prime, take your lethal hits from your invasion fleet, use your free strat from your hive tyrant to crit on fives, and you can suddenly kill all the big stuff that Tyranids normally can't kill. I killed a Taunar at LVO with these guys. <laughs> um, that being said, 235 points for that combo plus the hive tyrant for the free strat is still too expensive to do that combo. I'm just paying for it anyways because Tyranids can't do it otherwise. Um, so I wish these guys went down a little bit. They didn't. They're okay. They didn't need to go down a lot. Um, I think 75 for three, so making them 25 points a model, is not asking for a lot with a guy that is three wounds with a four-up save and no invul. Um, but, yeah. So I, I think these guys could have gone down uh, 10 points for three, uh, 20 points for six, and they did not. But still take them because, again, that combo is really good. Uh, Tyranid Warriors with ranged bioweapons, they are the cheaper ones, and I think this is a lot more close to what you should be paying for Warriors um, in terms of points per profile. Uh, the problem is, is their profile is just so bad that it doesn't matter what their points cost is. They, on average, you, you have a six-man uh, ranged warrior squad. On average, they shoot, and they might kill a Marine. And then they charge and they punch that same marine squad. And they might kill a marine. And that's just... <laughs> they, their, their ability is to fall back, shoot, and charge. But if every time you shoot and charge, you kill one guy, it, it doesn't matter. Um, so they, they just need... They need to hit on threes. And their guns need to be slightly better. Um... So yeah, unfortunately, they're unchanged and it doesn't matter because their profile is just so bad that it doesn't matter what their point cost is. Um, so yeah, I want to love these guys and in the beginning of the edition, I was running 12 of them and I have just been very disappointed, unfortunately. Uh, Tyrannocyte, the drop pod, still 105 points. I think this is way too expensive. Um, I think it should be like 80 and it didn't change. It stayed at 105, so yay, uh, our drop pod's still going to sit on the shelf. I I just, yeah, I think you're 25 points off of being able to win everything that we want to do with a drop pod, we can just do for free if we're just willing to wait one more turn. It, it makes it where the 105 points is just too much. Um, 75 or 80 points is still a lot. But that's what I would pay to be able to put in a threat turn one. Um, honestly, I think the way that Tyranids play, you kind of want to wait and be conservative anyways, because anything that's too aggressive in a drop pod, if you just drop it in turn one as a threat, your opponent says, okay, and then they kill it. Tyranids are not durable, so spend, making your non-durable units more expensive is just never a good thing. Um, and yeah, 105 points makes you almost double the cost of most things you would want to put in the Tyrannosite. Um, Tyrann effects. Now, if a Tyrann effects could go in a Tyrannosite, that would be good. Um, because the Tyrann effects is durable and dropping a flamer in turn one would actually be really good, but you can't. So you're still not taking a Tyrannosite. Uh, the Tyrann effects though went down. 65 points, maybe 55. I think it was 245. So he's 190 now. He's right back to where he was before the codex dropped. Uh, and that's, I think that's right where he should be. Uh, I don't know why they needed a 65 point or 55 point nerf uh, and take away their minus one damage. Um, so Tyrann effects at 190. This feels fine. Um, now that it's, now that the minus one damage is gone, I actually think it should be still maybe 180, 175. Um, but 190 is mostly fine for this guy. I think I do think he can see the table again. Um, I don't know which gun. Like, the Flamer is obviously really good, but 
Land Raider Redeemers are very much a popular thing in the meta right now, so... And Land Raider Redeemers have other guns, and they transport units, and they're more durable. So, um, and people are prepping to kill them. So that means that you're basically just, your profile is identical, but worse in every way by just a little bit, and you're 40 points cheaper. So it, it's, it's a very comparable thing, I guess, and that's not necessarily good enough, in my opinion. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm totally wrong. Terrain Affections with Flamers have historically been great, and they probably still are. I don't know why mine have always been very lackluster. Um, they're probably good. I think it's just me. Um, but yeah, 190 for Terrain Effects. The, the Rupture Cannon is also... It's swingy. The problem is... If it was D6 plus 6 damage, the Rupture Cannon would be great. 2D6 is so swingy that you want to be next to a Hive Tyrant to free CP reroll the damage when you roll that inevitably 1 and a 2 for 3 damage when your 1 hit finally gets through your opponent's invuln. Um Because, yeah, I, unfortunately 2 shots is just not reliable. You need to be a Lancer where you get to free reroll a hit, a wound, and a damage to be good with only two shots. And uh, the Terran Effects just doesn't do that with the Rupture Cannon, but I do think the Acid Spray at 190 is probably still very much a tournament option. Uh, Tyrant Guard, 95 points for three, 190 for six. They did not change. Um, they're still bad. I, it's just, you're paying more points to make your Hive Tyrant durable, except your Hive Tyrant doesn't do anything in, you know, on the front lines anyways. So even if he were to make it into combat, which is where the Tyrant Guard tell you he wants to make it, the Tyrant Guard themselves do nothing in combat. They are hilariously bad in this edition um, for their points. And the Hive Tyrant himself uh, is also hilariously bad for his points. So, sure, you're more durable, but you want to know what makes you the most durable? Just hiding behind a wall. So... Yeah, I think you save yourself the 200 points and you just hide behind a wall the entire game and enjoy your 12-inch bubble of free strats. Um, Venomthropes, 70 points, unchanged. Um, they're good if you're running infantry heavy. They're great. Otherwise, you leave them at home. So I think they're fine where they're at for points. Um, you just only take them in certain lists if you're running really infantry heavy. Uh, Von Ryan's Leapers. These guys... Everyone was really excited about them when they came out, and now they're not. They turns out strength five, AP one for one, is just not a good damage profile in this edition. Um, you can do a really cute trick with you know taking like twelve of them into vanguard and infiltrate and just screen out your entire opponent's deployment zone, and then watch them all die, <laughs> um, and say yay I delayed my opponent for a turn, but I don't think that's actually worth 300 points um it just it really sucks because they are really cool models but and they're okay in a vanguard but vanguard already suffers from a giant damage problem and that's because these guys suffer from a damage problem so and they just contribute to that and i i don't think points really fixes that it's really a data sheet problem for them they just don't do damage um Winged Hive Tyrant at 210, same as the walking one, like I said, he should be 190. Um, he's unchanged, and I think that's a miss. Um, you you maybe take one in the Vanguard because it can advance and charge, but again, six attacks with no rerolls is not a good damage profile for a monster <laughs> that's over 200 points. Um, especially when it's AP2, so like Space Marines just save on a 5-up. It's really upsetting. Um, Winged Tyranid Prime, 65 points. This is perfect. Uh, he didn't change. I think he's fine. 65 points for a Synapse guy that moves 12 is what... 65 points is what you should be paying. Uh, this is what the Parasite of Mortrex should be. Um, and the Winged Tyranid Prime is that, and he also gives out sustained hits if you want to attach him to something. Zone Thropes, uh, 110 for 3, 220 for 6. Again, unchanged. So... I, I think
think zone throw-ups are still a little too expensive. I think they should have gone back down. Uh, I think the 20-point nerf they took was completely unnecessary. I never really ran them anyways because, again, Tyranids don't really have rerolls. So six lance shots hitting on threes, wounding probably a tank if you're shooting your lance profile on threes, out of your six last cannons hitting and wounding on threes with no rerolls, you're getting two through. Your opponent probably saves one because they have an invuln or a five-up save with cover. Uh, and then you get to do D6 plus one damage. Yay, for 220 points. Uh, and then they get tagged and they do nothing because they're only 24-inch range. So in my opinion, zone tropes are very meh. And that has been my opinion since the codex dropped and then they went up in points. And so the only thing is in the synaptic nexus, all of those problems go away because suddenly you can reroll ones to hit and wound and you have a strat to fall back and shoot. So zone throw-ups are very good in the synaptic nexus. Don't take them in anything else is my opinion. Um, and then we get to forge world, uh, the barbed hero duel, 340 points unchanged. Sure. I mean, if you want to take one, you can take one. It's, it's, the Nords are just better. <laughs> um, Herodin, 610. I think this is a typo, because I believe the Herodin was 650, but they did not put an indicator that this went down in points. So I think they kind of just put 610, thinking of the Herofint at 810. Um, but hey, maybe the Herodin went down 40 points. Um, he's still too expensive for a toughness 10 3-up save monster with no invul. Um, but he is the most efficient gun in our entire army by far. Uh, the plus one to wound thing. I think a Herodin actually in Crusher Stampede would be good because he hurts himself to get plus one to wound. And then when he's hurt, he gets plus one to hit. And suddenly hitting on twos, wounding, you know, T10 tanks on threes with tons of shots is really good for Tyranids. And we really, really need that kind of damage profile. Uh, unfortunately, I think the Herodin is going to live for one to two turns and then die, and that is not worth over 600 points. So, um, yeah. Hero Fint, 810, unchanged. Uh, he's still a meme pick. You know, he's, he's dur durable. I took him to Salt Lake Open, and it was fun, but he died turn two in four of my six rounds, so... That's uh, really bad for something that's over 800 points. Um, I do think he's actually a lot more durable now because that was back when dev wounds were everywhere. Like Stern Guard basically is in my round one. He died turn one to Stern Guard because that was when they had full hit and wound rerolls with dev wounds. Um, sustained and lethal and on fives and, you know, that stupid combo. Uh, the lethality of the game has gone down quite a bit thanks to the now nerf to Eldar, uh, the nerf to Chaos Space Marines, and obviously those dumb like Stern Guard combos are basically out of the game at this point. Um, so he actually could be good again. Um, I'm just, I'm not probably going to try it, but good luck to you guys if you want to. He might just live forever at this point, which would make him considerably better. Um, finally, side Tira Duel, 330 points, same thing as the Barb Tira Duel. They're all right, but uh, Norns are just better now. So, anyways, that is the uh, that's the list. So, hope you guys are excited as I am. I'm busting out a whole bunch of new lists. Um, I guess sure. I'm gonna give you guys a, a tease of the first list that I built that I think is actually really good and uses a lot of guys that have not otherwise been uh, played. So, um, this is a Synaptic Nexus detachment. Uh, being run with Death Leaper Neuro Tyrant. Uh, those guys obviously are not new, but basically both of these are for leadership shenanigans, um, and your this whole list is built around battle shocking the crap out of your opponent, and then doing tons of mortals when they fail through the Synaptic Nexus uh, grenade strat when they fail battle shock is basically the thought of this whole list. So Death Leaper for the minus one leadership aura. Neuro Tyrant for minus one when you do Shadow on the Warps. And of course, in the Synaptic, he's great with the 10-point Flamer Enhancement. Uh, then I have a lone Winged Tyranid Prime with the Dirge Heart Enhancement. So 15-point Enhancement. 80 points gives you a 
12 inch moving synapse guy that also has a minus one leadership bubble uh which again the whole point of this list is to make your opponent fail battle shock so um you combo this winged tyranny prime and death leaper you move both of them next to the target that you want to fail battle shock um and then you've got two screamer killers no three screamer killers in the list now and uh, they get to basically shoot him, and suddenly whatever you're shooting is taking battle shock checks at minus three, so they're probably failing because uh, they can't do anything to assist this. And you also have three squads of three zoanthropes uh, because all of them have the neurothrope thing that says each time a unit fails battle shock within six of these guys, they take d3 mortals. So you just have three Neurothropes. You basically, you pick your one thing that you just really want to kill, say a Catan, which are going to be everywhere. Um, the Catan comes forward and you're like, okay, well, the only way I have of dealing with this problem is Mortal Wounds. And you just put three Zoanthropes next to the Catan. You then just shell it with uh, the Screamer Killers and they're taking Battle Shock at minus three. And every time they're failing, they're taking 3d3 mortals from the zoanthropes, and you get to pop the grenade strat on top of that um, to do, on average, four more mortals. Um, and then just finishing up the mortal theme, you've got two toxicrines, which can just hold your target in place uh, for you to form that combo around, uh, and then do mortals at the end of your movement phase in addition to that. Um, and you've got Neurogaunts to do secondaries to screen to uh, extend synapse as needed because you're in the synaptic nexus. So three squads of Neurogaunts, two Neurolictors. I really wanted three. I didn't have the points for it. So unfortunately they had to be cut. Um, and yeah, that's that's the list. Uh, nope, sorry. And a Norn Assimilator because a Norn Assimilator is actually hilarious in synaptic nexus because it can outflank and then the turn that it outflanks, you choose plus one uh, to advance and charge. And then you shoot your target with your harpoon and you suddenly have plus three to charge out of reserve. And a six inch charge out of reserve on a 300 point combat monster seems really good. So yeah, um, plus 290 points for a Norn Assimilator who can now get Armor of Contempt. Um, yeah, I actually like this list a lot. This is what I'm planning on playing as my fun list. And who knows, maybe it'll actually be really good. Um, other than that, I adapted my LVO list a little bit. All I did was, uh, if you guys want to watch my LVO video, I'm not going to go over my entire LVO list now. But the changes from the data slate that I've made to my LVO list are, I dropped the third Maliceptor, I dropped the third Neurolictor, and I dropped the Neuro Tyrant, and I got two Screamer Killers. So I can just really force that plus one to wound um, I, I think it's worth it. So um, basically the Neuro Tyrant was there to battle shock things to give me plus one to wound. And now I've got Screamer Killers to do the same. And yeah, that's that's basically the list. Um, let me know what you guys are planning on running, what you're excited about with the data slate. I think, again, the fact that the top of the game got cut and we got a very slight, but a buff, um, I think actually is putting Tyranids in a really good spot right now. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Hope you liked this video and uh, talk to you guys next time. Thanks.